Hi, today is Saturday, March 25th, 2017. It's the sixth day of the fourth week of Lent, and this is a Sweet Speaks. And I would like to talk about seven more reasons not to move to Scandinavia. For those of you who haven't seen it, uh, yesterday I posted a video called Six Reasons Not to Move to Scandinavia. I think you should watch that one too. And I will post a link to that video in the information box below. But right now, let's take seven more reasons not to move to Scandinavia. So, number one, and this might be the big one here. Leftism. Leftism has eaten its way into almost everything in Scandinavia. Let me give you a few examples. Scandinavian politics, and it doesn't matter if you're talking about, and by Scandinavia right now, I am referring to Nordic countries. I know that in English you usually mean the Nordic countries when you say Scandinavia. I'll accept that. So, right, so I mean Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, and sort of Iceland too, but I don't really know much about Iceland. So it's sort of just Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and Finland that I focus on right now. I'll go to Iceland one day, but yeah, that's a digression. Let's, say, let's talk about this leftism, politics. The political parties in the, four, in the four countries I am focusing on now are all insanely leftist, especially when it comes to the, value, to, to the values, to, well, to cultural things. I mean, the right-wing party of Sweden, the moderates, yeah, that's their name. They used to be called Högerpartiet, which you could translate into the right, the right party or the right-wing party. But uh, somewhere around 1969, after the, I think after, after, after all this leftism of the 68 era with the baby boomers coming, starting college, etc., they thought that they would change their name because it doesn't, did, did not sound well in Sweden to be a right-wing party. So they were re renamed themselves to Moderaterna, the moderates, to say that they were moderately conservative. And maybe they were moderately conservative back then. By now, they're not conservative at all. They might, they might want lower taxes. But that's about it. There is no opposition to to the breakup of the family, there is no uh, there's no opposition to children being in daycare instead of with their moms. There's no opposition. There's no discussion of what kind of uh, culture you have in, say, Sweden or Norway or Denmark. Well, in Denmark they sort of have some discussion about it, so it's a little less bad. Because as my friend the Furious Tory likes to point out to me. I can't really say Denmark is better than Sweden, because then I'm saying Sweden is good. So instead I'll say, Denmark is less bad than Sweden. Norway is less bad than Sweden. Finland is less bad than Sweden, but they still got their problems, so let's take the leftism here. We have the politics, no conservative party whatsoever to speak of. They have a party in Denmark called the conservatives, they might be good, so okay. I'll give them the benefit of a doubt until further notice. In Finland, as far as I can, I can see, nah, no real conservative parties, no real conservative parties. In Norway, we got Høyre, which is the conservative party, but they're not conservative. Høyre were the ones, I mean, the Høyre government, Høyre and Fremskrittspartiet. Fremskrittspartiet is the progressive party, or the progression party, whatever. Supposedly the right-wing populists. This government decided that seven-year-old children in Norway can change their legal gender by just uh, filling out a form online to the, Norwegian, to the Norwegian census register. They don't have to go through any surgery, so okay, that's fine. They're not changing the gender for real. They're just changing it in the, in the census, which is bad enough. But hey, come on, seven years old. And this is a supposedly a right-wing government. I mean, seriously, come on. And then, I mean, there are a few parties. The Sweden Democrats in Sweden, yeah, they sort of understand the part where that Islam isn't really a good idea. They sort of understand that multiculturalism isn't a good idea. 
but they're social democrats. Really, basically, they just went back to the good old social demo democrat democracy that Sweden had once. And yeah, if I was, if I would have been a Swedish citizen, which I am not anymore, I was before, but I'm not now. I would vote for them anyway, because there are no, they're, they're, they are like the least bad alternative. That's my my view on it. So I would vote for them anyway. And that's just the way it looks around the Nordic countries, or around, around Scandinavia. In the media, the mainstream media, do you think there was any big, do you think there was any mainstream media in Scandinavia who, who, were, who were pro Trump? Forget about that. What do you think the mainstream media in uh, Scandinavia thought about George W. Bush? They didn't like him. I mean, there are there, there is no room for a conservative perspective there might be some room for for the perspective that we might we should maybe have a little lower taxes but even that is questionable and this has something to do with the culture they, they, they have managed to they have managed to go through a cultural shift from because all of these countries were more or less lutheran orthodoxy and they were pretty strict about it. And they all managed to, to move rather into social democracy and now into neo leftism. Sweden is the worst, of, of course, but the otherwise the other ones are, are somewhat like that too. Sweden and Denmark are competing about who is go, who is to have the highest taxes in the world. A few years ago, the then so called non socialist government of Sweden were sharing because they no longer had the highest taxes in the world because now Denmark had beaten them yeah right wonderful really and I'm sort of sarcastic okay and all this is instilled instilled into Swedes through the school system through the media through everything okay as I said this might be the biggest one so we're done now with number one leftism number two Secularist, secularism. I mean, that's an obvious consequence of number one of leftism. But there's also this. If I walk down the street wearing this cross, which I do, okay, most people aren't going to say aren't going to say anything. People might stare. But if I open my mouth and declare to people that to me Christianity is not just about culture, it's not just about heritage, it's about a real faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then they're going to consider me nuts. If I say that I am against abortion because I think that, uh, that all life is sacred and uh, that the unborn should be protected, because you shouldn't kill anyone who hasn't, who doesn't deserve it. The unborn cannot deserve it. We could discuss the death penalty, fine. We could discuss that. We can discuss killing in waders, I mean in war, fine. But the unborn. If I say, if I state my opposition to killing the unborn, because, well, because they are created in the image of God. Because you, because thou shall not kill, which actually I think should be read, thou shall not murder. Pray, Danish Prager says so. We'll see. Yeah, then I'm considered crazy. Okay, number three, migration policies, especially true about Sweden, but it's been true for Norway. It's a little better in Norway, or a little less bad. Sorry. And Finland has also had a problem with this. They are a little less bad than Sweden, but still there's a problem. And Denmark, I don't really know. The, Dan the Danes were pretty smart when they lowered the benefits they gave to asylum seekers. So they all came to Sweden instead. But the problem with the migration policies is that instead of doing good, and doing good would be helping as many people as possible at the lowest price possible to be able to help more people. That would mean helping people where they are. Instead of importing, instead of allowing a few of them to come here, which will cost a lot more. And if you say this, then you're a racist. 
And even if I say, but yes, there might be some cases where we have to accept some migrants because they can't be helped where they are, they should be helped in a safe place, and maybe the safe place, place should be Sweden, or maybe the safe place should be in Greece and Sweden should help Greece to help whatever. No, they won't listen, and the migration policies are slowly but efficiently killing off Sweden, and uh, Finland might, might survive this, Norway. Maybe Denmark, maybe the Danes are getting pretty tough. So, yeah, anyway, number four, and this is this is a, the one I really don't like. Number four, even Christians are cowards. Okay, we forget if we forget about the liberal Christians, the ones who sort of think it's nice to go to church, but they don't really want it to mean anything for how they live their lives. That's a pretty. I understand completely that that idea, but if we forget about them and we take the ones saying that they are reading the Bible as the Word of God, they are in one or another way reading it literally. Of course, we can discuss how to interpret it. It doesn't matter really. But the ones we would that would end up in the conservative among the conservative Christians, a lot of them. Or maybe pretty good on theology, they don't understand politics, or they don't dare to speak up because they are more afraid of other humans than they are of God. Let me give you an example. Franklin, Gra Franklin Graham is coming to Oslo to speak. There was a committee up, there was a committee set up to arrange this. Half of the com committee has has left the committee. You want to know why? Because they found out that Franklin Graham supported Trump, at least he supported him when he was the Republican candidate, and he was uh, the, the minister to whom uh, Trump was being sworn in when he sworn the presidential, well you know, the oath. And Franklin Graham said bad things about Islam. Yeah, half of the half of the committee leaves ship. They don't dare to take the flak, the heat they'll get from it. There are a few left still, and oh, we need to pray for them. But I mean, just yeah, I could go on forever about this, but I won't. I'm just saying, a lot of the Christians, even the conservatives, one in Scandinavia, are cowards, and it really, really saddens me. Number five. No homeschooling. This is, as far as I know, especially true about Sweden and Norway. In Sweden, homeschooling is outlawed. If you are homeschooling your children, the police will knock at your door and they will force force them to a school that has been a public school or maybe a private school, but one that is authorized by the authorities. So they're going to make sure they get the right kind of indoctrination. Yes, the leftism I was talking about the number one in this list. In Norway, homeschooling is, is officially allowed, but in many municipalities in Norway, if you homeschool your children, the Norwegian children's care will come and knock at your door because they're going to think you're abusing your children. Barn of Ernest, I mentioned it in my, in my first video. So the control is pretty, pretty bad. Number six. No Second Amendment. In none of the Nordic countries or the Scandinavian countries. Okay, not talking about Iceland now. I don't know about them, but apart from that. There is no amendment or there is no law that is a part of a constitution saying that any law abiding citizen should be allowed to own and carry arms. There is no no you have no no guaranteed right to defend yourself and your family. And number seven is of the all of the funnier of the funnier thing. But you know, uh, lo, for a long part of the year is dark and cold. So you shouldn't move to Scandinavia. You should move someone else, somewhere else. And that's what I have to say about this right now. And as it is Saturday now, I am planning not to make any videos tomorrow. Unless something really big happens, I'm taking the Sunday off, but I'll be back again on Monday. 
And uh, I would like to thank the people who are, who are supporting this channel through Patreon, through PayPal, through prayers. It's all very appreciated. And if you like this channel, uh, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. And, you know, click that little bell too, so you're really notif notified when, when I upload something. Um, like my videos if you like them. If you got something to say, feel free to comment. Share my videos on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, whatever. And I would also like to encourage you to support this channel. And I will include information on how to do that in the information box below. This is a Sweet Speaks. Have a nice day.